In today's video, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at one of my favorite Bitcoin only open source wallets, and it's called the Sparrow Wallet. I briefly introduced it in my last video, but today's video is going to be a really deep dive. We're going to look at some settings, some features, some benefits, and then I'm going to demonstrate how to set up an air-gapped hardware wallet using my Blockstream Jade, neat little device. And I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a wired or connected hardware wallet using my, my Trezor Safe 3. And then I'm going to set up an internet connected hot wallet using the Sparrow wallet. I'm going to send some Bitcoin to it. Well, actually I already did, but hasn't confirmed yet. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to send the Bitcoin out of the wallet and show you around inside the wallet itself. If that sounds good. Let's go ahead and dive in. Here we are at SparrowWallet.com. And if you'll notice, it's pretty Spartan. There's not a lot going on here and not very flashy. But this wallet, what it lacks in flash, it makes up for in features and usability. It is a really neat wallet. You can play this little video if you want, which will show you some of the functionality of the wallet. We are on the home page, but they do have a list of some of the features. Full support for single and multi-sig wallets and common script types. They support native SegWit and Taproot, which are the latest two types of wallets that support lower fees. There's You can connect to a public server, a Bitcoin Core server, if you run a, a Bitcoin node in your home, and a private Electrum server. It's a standards-based wallet, which includes full support for partially signed Bitcoin transactions using air-gapped wallets and support for all common hardware wallets. I have not found a hardware wallet that is not supported, if that makes sense. Every wallet I've tried to use with Sparrow Wallet has been supported, so its range of supported wallets is tremendous. Full coin control, which is fantastic. Labeling of transactions are required, which is nice. Multi-platform, they have versions of the Sparrow Wallet for Mac, Windows, and multiple versions for Linux. And it's built in Tor, which is a very high security system. And you can connect to the testnet, Bitcoin testnet, or the main chain, or whatever you want. Wow. A lot of features on this um, wallet. Let's go ahead and head over to the features page and you have a little blurb about each feature. They have encryption in the wallet to keep your keys safe if you have a software wallet and um, you can export wallet history. It is really neat, very lightweight and you can use your own blockchain explorer. Oh, and if you're really enthusiastic, you can donate right here. So you would head over to the download button and download one of the appropriate versions for your hardware. Next, we're going to go over to the application itself, and I will show you around a little bit. The Sparrow Wallet has been downloaded, installed, and opened, and this is the screen you're greeted with. If you'll notice down here in the lower right, there's a little toggle switch. Right now it's yellow because I'm connected to public blockchain servers. And if I click this off, I'm not connected to the blockchain at all. So if I issue a transaction using this wallet, nothing will happen. It won't go through until I connect to a blockchain. That is, I have an option to connect to my personal Bitcoin node. If you are running one in your home, you can do the same. And you do that by going to the Sparrow menu, clicking settings, and you're greeted with this dialog box. So these are the general settings for the wallet. And you can select the server settings down here. We can edit existing connection. And right now I am on the public server, specifically blockstream.info server. And you have a choice of which public server you'd like to connect to. You can connect to your own Bitcoin node or use a private Electrum server. So those are your options. Right now, I'm not going to run a node, frankly, because I don't have enough ports on my Mac to do so while I'm recording. So I'm going to close this, otherwise I would. We're going to demonstrate the creation of an air-gapped wallet using the Blockstream Jade. I can do this, I timed myself, in less than 90 seconds. <laughs> so what I do is I create a seed phrase on a, any publicly available seed phrase generator, and there's a lot of them on the internet. Make sure you do it offline. And all of this can be done while you're disconnected from the internet. I'm going to select an option on my Blockstream Jade called QR mode, where you can scan a QR code. Then it uses that QR code as the keys for the device, as if it was using that account. And then when you turn it off, it gets rid of that all that information. So it's sort of empty when you're not using it. You just scan the QR code and bang, you're in. 
You can enter the passphrase if you have one, but I'm not going to use one. I'm going to scan a seed QR, and I'm going to go over to this QR generator. I'll scan the seed, and I'll be right back. Okay, I scanned the seed phrase, and now I have an active Blockstream Jade wallet here. But what I want to do is I want to interact with it and send some Bitcoin in or out or whatever using the Sparrow wallet as a connection device or as the, the interface to my hardware wallet. But I'm never going to connect this to the computer. So what I need to do is select create new wallet right here on the home page. I'm going to call this BSJ, Blockstream Jade, create wallet. And none of these options are available to me right now because on the left-hand side, because we don't have a wallet in this account yet. I can change my settings, but I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to leave it just as is. We could make this a taproot wallet. We could make it a multi-sig wallet. But what we're going to do, what we're interested in right now is this air-gapped hardware wallet. I'm going to select that. I'm going to find Jade, which is right here. I'm going to scan. And on my Jade, I'm going to select export my XPUB. Okay, that's it. Now the air-gapped wallet is connected to the Sparrow wallet. I can receive Bitcoin, but I can't send without using the Sparrow wallet to verify the transaction. And you would do that through QR codes. That's for another video on the Jade itself. But today, we're just going to show you this quick and dirty way to do this. I'm going to press apply down here in the lower right and set a password for this wallet. And that's it. <laughs> that is how fast you can set up an air-gapped hardware wallet using the Sparrow wallet. Smooth as silk. So then if you wanted to receive Bitcoin, and this is a Bitcoin-only application, you would press the receive button, copy this address, put it in the wallet that you're going to send from, send Bitcoin to this address, and it would appear in this list here. And it, of course, appears well and here. So, okay, so that is an air-gapped setup of the Blockstream Jade using the Sparrow Wallet. Now, let's do another one, and we're going to use my Trezor Safe 3 to set up a connected wallet. I'm going to connect it with my USB-C cord and enter the pin, and I'll be right back. Okay, the Trezor is connected, and wait till you see how easy this one is. I have it connected via USB-C right here. You can see that. So you go back to the main menu, click New Wallet. We're going to call this one Trez Create Wallet. Same screen, same selections, same options. And I'm going to pick Connected Hardware Wallet because it's not air-gapped. It's connected. I'm going to scan. Wants me to enter a passphrase. I'm going to disregard that. Scan again. And there it is. Then I import Key Store. And there it is. But this is now my Trezor Safe 3 wallet connected. And I'm going to press apply, set a password, and that's it. That's how fast it is to set up a wallet with a connected hardware device. The keys stay on the device. The keys stay on the other device, on the Trezor. They never leave the piece of hardware. And that's why it's called cold storage, because the keys are not ever off of that device. Unlike a hot wallet, which is what we're going to get to next. So that's easy stuff. I'm going to close this and we're going to move on to the next wallet. And that is a hot wallet. So I am going to show you how to create a hot wallet quick and dirty. Press, go back to the main screen again and press new wallet. We're going to call this hottie. Create wallet. And this time we're going to use new or imported software wallet because this is a new software wallet. And we're going to use 12 words. You would click generate new. Once you write down the words, you can add a passphrase in this area if you like, and then you press confirm backup. It will ask you to repeat some of the words. Once you do that, you'll go back to the main screen and I'll meet you there. Here we are back at the main page and I re-entered the C phrase. Everything went well, so I press apply, enter a password for the encryption, and that is how you make a hot wallet. Awesome. I ha already have some Bitcoin in another hot wallet. I'm going to go over there and show you how to send Bitcoin out of the wallet. Okay. 32 minutes ago, I sent Bitcoin from an exchange to this wallet. And the block that it was in was the very first block. The block still has not confirmed. This drives me 
crazy. It's one of the things that I really think is limiting the full adoption of Bitcoin as a potential uh, world currency. You can't use it for a transaction when one block takes 32 minutes plus to confirm. To confirm one time, the transactions aren't final until the second confirmation. This is crazy. So anyway, I can't demonstrate sending this Bitcoin out of this wallet until the transaction gets confirmed. And who knows, the longest I've waited for a transaction to be confirmed is a little over an hour for one block to be confirmed on the blockchain. And this isn't a transaction that keeps sliding down the blockchain. This is in the very first block. So when I did it, I thought, oh, it's just going to take five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a tour of the Sparrow wallet. On the left here, these buttons are now available to poke around. Let's go ahead and look at some of these menus at the top here. There's a file menu, view menu, and tools menu. File menu just says uh, new wallet, open wallet, open a transaction from different sources. You can import a wallet, you can export a wallet, rename a wallet, or delete a wallet. And then in the view tab, the view menu, you can change your Bitcoin units, the format where the prints or where the commas are, and change the theme of the application from light or from dark to light. But we are not animals, so we're going to use the dark theme. Here we go. We can open wallets in new windows. Uh, we can restart the application in testnet mode, which is really neat. And let's see, we can lock all the wallets. We can search the wallets, etc., etc. You can poke around there. So what are these buttons on along the left side? The top one, which we're in right now, is transactions. And right now there's only one transaction in this wallet, and which has still has not confirmed. We And the next button down is to send. You use This is the send screen. I'll get to that. Hopefully <laughs> we can receive Bitcoin by going pressing the receive button, which is next. Copying this address, which is a native SegWit address. Adding a label if we want and or scanning the QR code. Best practices is to scan the QR code rather than copying and pasting because there are a lot of malicious softwares that monitor clipboards and will take addresses from you. And we have a list of addresses right here. So far, we've used this one and the next one down, et cetera, et cetera. So we can improve our privacy by using a new address for each new transaction or new received transaction. But when you do that, you're creating a lot of what are called UTXOs. And when you send the Bitcoin out and you're doing it, pulling from different UTXOs, you can create a situation where you generate a really high transaction fee. So you can consolidate into a, a single address at a later date. Down here, you have the list of your UTXOs. Right now, this is unconfirmed yet. It's a demo transaction, and hopefully soon enough that will be confirmed and we can send it out. And then the last one is the settings. This screen is the familiar screen, sort of the home page, I guess, if you will. In here, there's a button for exporting the wallet using different formats, Sparrow format, and Spectre desktop, Electrum, etc. And we can add an account to this wallet, which is sort of like adding another passphrase, but uh, it uses an index number instead of a passphrase. Okay, let's go ahead and head over to mempool.space and see if that transaction has confirmed. Here we are at mempool.space. And you can see the transaction, which is right here, is in the latest block or the most recent block that's about to be confirmed. And it has not been confirmed. Oh, I missed this block two minutes ago. So you can see 39 minutes it took for this block, 37 minutes, for this block to be confirmed. Hopefully this one will be confirmed quickly and will be included in that. And we'll jump over to this side to the blocks that are confirmed and the transaction will go from unconfirmed to confirmed. Once we do that, I'll jump back in with you and we'll look at the Sparrow wallet and send that Bitcoin back out. You're not going to believe it. After 46 minutes, the transaction was confirmed. It took three blocks. And again, this is one of the frustrations with the Bitcoin main chain that uh, the Lightning Network and the Liquid Network are supposed to help with, but the adoption of the Lightning Network is so slow and just not happening that we still have to work with the main chain and it is painful. 
to work with sometimes. Let's get back to the Sparrow Wallet and I will show you how to send that payment out. Here we are back at the Sparrow Wallet and we're going to go to see if the transaction, it's partially confirmed, but I believe I can try to send it out at this point. I'm not positive about that. Let's see. I'm going to get an address from another wallet. I'm going to paste that address into this pay to area, copy and paste. There we go. We're going to have a label on here that says demo. And this is really neat. I love this feature and I really think it should be in every single wallet because I don't want to use this wallet again. So I'm going to send all the Bitcoin out. Now it's a little complicated because you need to be able to pay for the fee. So the fee has to be calculated and reduce the amount you're sending so that you're sending all of the Bitcoin. And right now the fees are very low, which is fantastic. So I'm going to press max for the amount of Bitcoin I want to send out. And the fee is sort of calculated for me. And a giant amount of $19.56 is going to this address. Now we can change the fee based on how quickly we want to get it processed. Of course, I would like it processed in the first block, but it's all the same fee from block one to block 10. So it doesn't matter. I'm just going to slide it to one and it's four sats per V byte. The fee can be denominated in Bitcoin or sats. Pretty cool. And if you click this diagram down here, it shows you where the Bitcoin is going to go. It's going to, the Bitcoin's going to, majority of the Bitcoin is going to flow to the next spot. That's the demo transaction. And the fee is right here. We can maximize efficiency or privacy. And I'm going to create the transaction with this button down here in the lower right. Then we're greeted with this page. We have an overview and details. The signing wallet is the hot wallet. The SIG hash is all. Don't know exactly what that is. That's a little above my pay grade. And then we finalize the transaction for signing and finally sign the transaction. And then I enter the password for the wallet and out it goes. And then we broadcast it to the blockchain. That's it. So I'm going to close this. We're going to go back to transactions. And now we can see we have an unconfirmed <laughs> deposit, excuse me, an unconfirmed withdrawal and a partially confirmed deposit. Still partially confirmed. I love this wallet. I think it is solid. I've never had a crash on any type of hardware that I've tried it on. It is a really neat wallet and I love the interface for the Trezor. I love the interface for the Blockstream Jade and other hardware wallets. Plus it's a really neat way to set up a quick hot wallet. If you guys have used the Sparrow wallet, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about it. And if I've missed anything, please let me know. Otherwise, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.